Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You've made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, the animals of the wild, the birds of the sky, and the fish of the air, and all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Well, I am excited about our new um, series that we have here, starting out with the the Apostles' Creed. It's kind of important, I think, as we start out a new year, sometimes to go back to the very basics and, and understand, you know, why is it that we believe what we say we believe? And, and do we, in fact, believe these various things? You know, I'm kind of reminded of the famous football coach that at the beginning of, of training time of his, his professional NFL football team, he picked up, hold up a football and says, gentlemen, this is a football. You know, sometimes we have to go back to the very basics. And especially in our churches, we are at that place of, of revitalization, seeking revitalization. We need to know what is it we believe? What is the core of our church and, and who we are in Christ as we, as we go forward? And so we'll be looking at this, at this particular creed. Now, um, if you are a member of the church and have been through the new members class, you are aware, of course, I mean, we all know that we belong to two different denominations. And in our church, we're, we are not ones who say, you know, if you're going to join our church, that you have to sign off on a particular um, statement of beliefs. And, and, you know, in some churches, they do that. You have to sign and say, yes, I agree with every word in this statement. Um, and we consider ourselves as non-credal in that sense, where you don't have to sign off on that. You know, we believe the Bible and, and what it says. But we also in this church have taken the Apostles' Creed as our statement of faith. It's in our, in our bylaws and such as our statement of faith. And the Apostles' Creed um, is sort of, it, it's considered the oldest of the creeds. Creeds were created back when, when there were these um, challenges or to what was the official truth, what was the belief of our Christian faith that had been p- passed down from Christ and the apostles. And different people come in and have different ideas along the way and think, well, maybe it's this way or maybe it's that way. And the faith can get diluted. And so uh, it was believed we need to spell out specifically what is essential for the Christian faith. And so these creeds were created. The Apostles' Creed um, in the, the form that we have it now, um, the earliest version that is, is known was in 340 A.D. But the, the wording there is very, very, very similar to a, a baptismal rite that was used in the early 200s and such, and it may date back even further than that. Um, because, again, when, w- then when people were baptized before they came into the church officially, this was the words they would say, in order to say, yes, I I truly believe what the Christian faith teaches and such. So we are going to be going through this um, through the next eight weeks and looking at at each part of the creed. And so to try and understand, do we really believe this? You know, we live in a pluralistic society. We know that there are beliefs of all sorts and people can believe anything they want to about God but if we are not believing what we've been taught as a Christian what how God has revealed himself through the holy scriptures then we're in danger of idolatry we are believing creating God in our own image and so it's important that we know what we believe and so each week also in your bulletin there will be some discussion questions This is not like 
sometimes, you know, we put a bulletin insert for sermon notes and they have the little fill in the blank things or whatever and just to encourage you to actually listen so you can fill in the blanks. Um, that's not what this is going to be about because I'm not necessarily going to give you the answers to these questions. Some of them may not really have answers. Some of them are personal reflections as well. And so I just encourage you, we're going to be using these questions in some of our studies. Uh, we have an adult Sunday school class at 9 a.m. and also a youth Sunday school class for middle school and up um, or younger if they choose to come. But anyway, and our ladies, ladies Bible study that meets at Tuesday afternoons at 1.30. They're going to be using this study. We are, in fact, going to be, this is a commercial right now, but uh, meeting this Tuesday, ladies. So, um, But if you're not in a group or whatever, you can still take these home, and I'd encourage you, you can use the questions for discussion points um, with your family. Um, maybe as, if you have family devotions, maybe choose a, a question each day or, or however you want to use those. But consider and reflect on them. Um, some of these are challenging and don't necessarily have an answer. So this morning, we begin with our, um, the very beginning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And so, again, that is about as basic as we can get. I believe in God. If we are Christians, that's, that's foundational, fundamental. First off, of course, we believe in God. Well, there are lots of, lots of religions that believe in God. Um, what makes our belief different as Christians? And so we believe in God, the Father Almighty. And of course, we believe then that God is um, a person. God is personal. A lot of folks have understood God as some kind of far out, off thing. But we understand that you know God is a is a being. He is a person. He is a living one. He is the eternal one. We understand God as as existing in three persons. The creed is spelled out with you know God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so we understand God as existing in three persons. As we look at the study of the of the Son, the, the biggest part of that creed is all about Jesus, because that's where the most controversy comes in. How do, what do we know and understand about Jesus? So we'll spend several weeks there. But for today, believing in God, the Father Almighty. So right away, we get to this word Father, and that can create a challenge for some folks and an issue. Um, does that mean, when we talk about God the Father, that God is then necessarily a man? masculine in gender. Does God have gender at all? Well, no, not really. God is spirit, and, so, and God is complete and fullness, and so he doesn't necessarily have one gender or another. Um, we know in the Bible that, that there are some feminine imagery as well that, that God uses to describe himself. But why do I use masculine language. I, I know sometimes people have questioned that, and, and um, back in my days years ago doing an ordination interview, and, and that was the one thing they took me to task for in the UCC, that I used masculine language. I'm like, well, I use that just because Jesus did, and I'll never, ever, ever be a better preacher than Jesus, and he's the authority. He knows God better than anybody, and so if it's good enough for, for Jesus, it's good enough for me. But that term father also creates challenges for people if they've not had um, a good fatherly image that they can look up to if they've been abused or abandoned or neglected by a father or whatever. But yet isn't it good to know that we all have a loving, caring father? This word is meant to speak of of the relationship that we have with God, that God is our provider. He's the one who cares for us. We are his little children, and he takes care of us, and he, you know, he's one we can run to and be glad and 
be put back together when our things fall apart. You know, we come to our Father and, and look up to Him and respect Him. God is the one who is there to provide for us and to care for us. As last week we talked about how, you know, God, that imagery of God as our husband. Um, but again, relationship. He wants to be with us. He loves us and wants to have that, that relationship. And so it's a personal thing with our God. God is not just out there in the heavens somewhere. You know, they, a lot of our, some of our founding fathers in the nation were, were deists, which meant that, you know, they believed in God. They just thought, well, he, he sort of got, he created the world, put everything into place, and, and got all the laws and, and things established, and then wound it up like a clock and, and left and stepped away, and now it just runs according to the rules and the patterns that he, that he set in place. But that's not our Christian understanding. It's like, no, God is involved in our lives. He is involved. He cares about every aspect of our lives, even the, the minutest things. Jesus said, the hairs of our head are all numbered. He cares about the littlest, tiniest things in our lives. He is very present in the world and active um, throughout the scriptures is what we see. God at work through men and women and leading them, guiding them, and helping them on a regular basis. God is the living one. He is active. He is a personal God that we can know and love because he loves us. And so God, our Father, we believe in God the Father Almighty. Almighty, meaning, of course, he is all-powerful. He can do everything. He knows everything. He is everywhere present at once. And there's nothing that is impossible for God. God is almighty. And he created, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And so God has created everything, the entire world. And so, you know, other religions back in when God was revealing himself to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses, others that would create little, little idols out of wood or stone or precious metals or whatever, an inanimate object, and then give that, assign to that thing powers and, and such. No, God is the powerful one. God is living and eternal, and he is the one who created everything that exists. And so his glory is revealed in the heavens. There is enough in, in nature, in the created world, to help us to know that there is a God. Everybody can know that God um, exists by looking around at nature. It's too complicated. The more we find out through science about how, how intricate life is, the symbiotic relationship between different life forms and all, how everything's connected and, you know, in our ecosystem and all, the more we have to know that there is a God, an intelligent being that was behind it, that put it all together. So our statement of faith here says, you know, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. This is what's important for us as Christians to believe, that there is a God who is in relationship with us as a father who is all-powerful and who created the world that we live in. And we can draw a line there. It doesn't, it's interesting to me, we talk about Almighty God and there's one little, two little clauses here to speak about God Almighty, the Father. Um, but this is what is, is crucial for our faith, that we believe that God created the world. Now, how God created is not spelled out in the creed. And so I know in our church, sometimes this gets to be a, a sticky wicket. You know, we, it's almost like we can't talk about creation because we're going to get into a, into a battle here. Um, but it doesn't need to be that way. We don't have to argue and fight over how creation happened because that's not, that's not a matter for our salvation. Believing that there is a God and that he created the world is a matter for our salvation. We need to believe that. Um, but how it happened, you know, we can understand differently. If you believe that God created the world 
in six 24-hour days and are following, taking Genesis 1 in a literal sense, that is a biblical belief. And so it is to be respected. Uh, that is great to believe because God is totally able to do that, to create the world in six literal days. I absolutely believe that's true. On the other hand, if you believe that God, with God a, a thousand years as a single day or as a day as a thousand years, um, as Peter has written in, in 2 Peter 3, 8, quoting from Psalm 90, verse 4, that also then, it's scriptural, that is also a biblical belief um, and is to be respected. So we don't need to argue about that. Hold that, whatever makes sense to you. For me, I'm like, I, I don't know, I don't care. God is able, he could have created the world in a split second. Yeah, I, I do believe the Big Bang, because again, I've, I've said before, I think um, when God spoke the world into being, he spoke and it happened. He says, let there be, and it happened. There might have been a huge bang. And those, he's flinging those stars with a mighty arm, and they're still flying to this day. So yes, I believe that. He could have created in the split second. The Bible tells us he did it over a period of time, over these, these days as they're spelled out. And so however you want to understand that period of time doesn't matter. Um, whatever makes sense to you. The important things for us is God created the world. He created the world because of his love. God in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there is love, an amazing love. I mean, God is love. And he, there is love within the Trinity, each person loving one of each other with a love that we can't even comprehend. And that love found its expression further outward in creating humanity, creating the world that we live in today. And so God creating human beings just a little lower than the angels, it says, and giving us dominion over the earth. He's given us the, the power to, to, to be good stewards. When I say dominion, I, sometimes we've misunderstood that and think, oh good, it's all ours, we'll just take it and use it all up. No, we are to be stewards of what God has, has given to us. The earth has been put into our charge. If there are other planets that we can live on, maybe, but we don't know about those yet, and so we better take care of this one that we're on. And God has put that into us. The world, the created order, declares the glory of God. His majesty is evident all around the world. This beautiful, beautiful land that he has made for us to live. He's everything that we need has been provided by his hand. And so this week, as we go forward in our studies, spend some time this week thinking about God the Father. How do you understand him? How does he make himself real to you? How glad are you for this world that God has created for us. How is your relationship with, with God the Father? Is, is it a, it, do you think, when you think of the Father, is that a scary, a scary being for you? And you rather, well, I'd rather just deal with Jesus. I understand him better. But think about this week. Spend time with our Heavenly Father. Get to know him. Ask him if there's something about himself that he would like to reveal to you. Maybe something you don't already know. Or something, maybe there's a, a, a doubt or a question that you've had and been wrestling with for a while. Sit with the Lord this week with Yahweh and say, God, reveal yourself to me this week in a fresh way, spending time with our Father. And so would you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you that you are our Father, that you love us, that you chose to create us and to bring us into this world sometimes. Father, you know that I struggle, I don't understand how you don't get frustrated and upset with us and, and just wipe out the whole mess. But you don't, you love us. Thank you for giving us fresh opportunities 
for forgiving us and giving us a chance to start over and try to get it right. Lord, this week, as we think about you, I pray for each one of us that we might draw closer to you this week. Reveal yourself to us in a fresh way. And help us to share what we believe with others who might have a little different understanding of who you are. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.